this is Dust War Journals, and you are welcome to Hellgate Special! Whoa! Hi! <laughs> yes! My, yes, my name is Johannes, and with me today for this special occasion are my good co-hosts. Magnus and... The loose lips Luda is always here, of course. Uh, no question about that. Yes, always here. <laughs> yes, always here. It's always present. <laughs> and as you can hear from our uh, little special introduction here, this is a special episode all dedicated to the Operation Hellgate expansion book. Yes. Yes, we have the big... Ver- we should start with giving a very big thank you to uh, the studio and to Paolo himself uh, in particular for letting us take kind of part and read the Operation Hellgate book uh, in advance of its release. And we are here today to share this with you, the listeners, and get you as excited and hyped about this expansion as we are. Yes, it's going to be awesome. Yes, this we... is, uh, I mean, this is just packed full of cool stuff, this one. And, uh, well, uh, the subtitle of this uh, expansion is Nothing Will Be The Same. And I can tell you, nothing will be the same. <laughs> yeah, they they definitely have earned that tagline, I would say. Yep. <laughs> Everything they promised, they delivered yeah. in that aspect. So with that in mind, uh, let's just dive right into this book and uh, see if it has a chance to stand up to the high standards set by Operation Condor before mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. Yep. which, as uh, our listeners might remember, topped uh, or almost topped our all of our lists of the most exciting things that were released during 2017 so yeah, yeah. it's yeah. some big shoes to follow so uh, i think one of the first things we should do is kind of temper people's uh, expectations uh, we are not going to talk about the story uh, mm-hmm. in this book book because we won't want to save that for you the when you read it for the reading experience um, but just very, very shortly, not giving away too many details. Uh, how do we feel about the story in this book? Uh, well, um, there are some really cool short stories. Personally, I, I mean, they are written a little bit differently compared to Condor. And I really like those in Condor. These are a bit different, not... Um, in my view, they are good, but not quite as good as in Condor. But they are also... <laughs> It's hard to explain. (laughs) I guess you guys out there will will see it when you read it. Uh, They are a bit different, I would say. Uh, Somehow maybe a bit more personal. There are some cool characters that are directly involved and their paths cross several times. And uh, several of the heroes from almost all the different blocks show up at various times. Which yeah, is exactly. A very cool so thing. it's a it's a melting pot there with stuff happening all over the place. And we might just add then that this time it uh, it's a different author. It's uh, Olivier himself who have written written the short stories. So it's not uh, that might be a reason for it sounding a little bit different because it's another author. Yeah, it's and a, every author has its own way of. Uh, yeah, I remember him see? saying that this time he wrote everything himself. Yeah. So he's been really busy because this one is like uh, 144 pages mm-hmm. in total, this book. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of it. There's a lot. And stuff happens. <laughs> yeah, Definitely. stuff happens. Wow. Yeah, and then that's I'm keeping you two guys to try not to say too much because I'm going to do just as I did with Condor. I won't read any of the short stories before I get my own personal copy so to speak mm-hmm. i want something left for that special feeling when you open the the binders and you you smell the new printed pages and stuff like that so even though i'm immensely grateful that i could sneak peek i, I have not touched some of the stuff that's in these uh, preview uh, from right, right. Yeah. we all admire your integrity yeah, yeah exactly well, <laughs> you can call it that if you want to <laughs> <laughs> so let's get started with the book and the first thing you notice when you just open it up is the uh, standard map of the world which mm-hmm. is uh, kind Not of a standard. standard yeah it is standard yeah. for, yeah, yeah, for the uh, expansion books and for the rule book uh, however uh, it's not the same map as we've been used to. It's no, no, this time it's been updated. There's yeah, been so, quite uh, a few changes, actually. Of, uh, yeah, so previously in both the original uh, Dust 1947 rulebook and in Oper- Operation Condor, it was the standard map uh, dated January 1st, 1947. Mm-hmm. 
Now we're up to June 1st. Mm. And uh, yeah, some things have changed. <laughs> we're not going to go into all of the details here, but, but there are some very interesting things happening. Mm. It seems that the Allies are kind of losing ground almost everywhere. Yeah. Uh, one could say, though, check out especially Asia, at least, if not nothing else. Uh, there's a lot of stuff happening in many places in Asia. And, uh, well, yeah. Absolutely. The British Isles, some big major changes there. Mm. Uh, well, stuff happening all over the place, yeah, basically. <laughs> so that's that's really cool. Next up, let's go talk about some new Units and first up in the book we have the Desert Scorpions. Mm. So finally, I know people have been waiting for some of these units, heroes, and uh, new uh, vehicles, new squads. And let's start with the heroes. Yeah, you should start with the most beautiful hero in all the game. I would say finally he is here, uh, Marek. Of course, uh, I never seen a better looking hero. Uh, in all my life, in any game, I think. <laughs> Am I fishing for a discount? <laughs> yeah, you bet. No, seriously. I just feel it's, it's such a cool hero, isn't it? Yeah, of course. And this is uh, Lieutenant Marek Laskowski, of course, of the Desert Scorpions. And yeah, it's based on our good friend Marek of uh, Warfactory.io yeah. fame. Yeah, uh, so what is this hero uh, doing then? He is a nine-point hero with four hit points. And he has the Brave skill, he has the Defensive Tactics skill, and he wields a Phaser rifle. Hmm. Uh, so here we go with the Phasers for, <laughs> for the uh, Desert Scorpions. That's kind of their theme, I feel. Yeah, yeah it looks like it. It really do. But this is, uh, um, I mean, uh, Brave is a nice skill and all, but there are uh, other heroes that have it, and also a couple of platoons that you can gain bra Brave from. Uh, but I feel the combination of defensive tactics, which is a good skill, uh, with the um, kind of play style of the Desert Scorpions is interesting because they usually want to, you know, make like fast attacks. They uh, they use their fast trucks and everything, and and then Mark wants to uh, find some nice cover and use his phaser, and this needs to be in sort of a kind of forward position because the phasers don't really have that long range so uh well, it's still six which is pretty good for uh yeah, weapon it's, I mean, by yeah it's okay but he can't unit, he can't so. really stay back that's what i mean no, that's so true. we need to either run or maybe preferably go uh, go into the thick of it in one of those trucks and and uh kind of find a nice spot to be in well no, when i look at the his uh, skills and characteristics and all that and uh, perhaps also influenced a little bit by Marek himself i see this as uh the person that jumps from cover to cover he goes to from one place then he assaults and he shoots and he keeps going and that's why he has the brave skill because if he had just the defensive tactics and the phaser he could just go to a cover place stay there and shoot out of that but to me this is to emulate also how Marek plays when he plays with the trucks you he needs to go from one place to another and then advance until he's in your face and then he kills you because mm -hmm. th th that's Marek yeah. uh, he just he, he goes from <laughs> cover to cover and kicks your ass until he's in your face and then he kills you so, I mean to, to me the three the triple combo of these and of course I might be going ahead too fast here but there, we will be talking about his platoon uh, later on, and that makes it even better. So, well, yeah. Mm. Yeah, sure. yeah we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I try to keep calm, you know. So. Absolutely. Uh, next, uh, there's a bunch of heroes going on uh, here. We, we've seen all of them. We can just mention we have Greg Nissi, we have Sean, we have mm. Diver, we have Bullseye, we have Maggie, we have Action Jackson. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the thing that uh, we, we've seen this with the recent uh, Enlist update, that Action Jackson now gets to be in the Desert Scorpions officially. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And you can play his, his uh, um, airborne platoon as well as a Desert Scorpion platoon. Yeah. yeah. So that's nice. And we 
perhaps we shouldn't say this because it spoils a little bit about a map, but it's it's if you consider the map and consider where he's been stationed before, it's very clear that he needed some place else to be. Uh, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not giving it, you, you try to figure that one out yourselves. I think you can, guys. But uh, so it's it's a, a super good way to do this that he's into the Death of Scorpions. To me also, it's very interesting that Bullseye now seems to be uh, a real hero or that he's actually getting a place in the universe because in my mind, he was always, as perhaps we've talked too much about in the future, uh, in the past, I mean, uh, he was a a guy just for the British Championship way back. So uh, I thought he would disappear, but now he's he's coming up strong again. Yeah, and uh, spoiler... He is in the stories. In, oh yeah, in yeah, the, yeah, in yeah, the yeah, short I'm, stories. <laughs> yeah. I, I've seen the pictures, so I, I, I could gather that. Uh, yeah. That, by the way, is of course Oliver didn't want to win the, or the studio didn't want to win the competition we had. But if they had sent that picture in with Bullseye, uh, I, they would <laughs> have won that competition. No, <laughs> no, no sweat. Sorry, guys, you made great pictures, but to me. That is even topping the one with the Winter Child and the Rocket Man when they were squaring off in the Condor. So, to me, uh, this book has an even better story yeah, picture than. Yeah, the, there, there's some great uh, just model pictures, almost like diorama like uh, setups. There's also some great artwork in there, mostly yeah. focused on the uh, on the Cthulhu <laughs> mo- yeah. monsters and stuff. There's, it's it's just fabulous. I think mm-hmm. people are gonna love it. Mm. Next yeah. up, we got the Desert Scorpions Command Squad. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna yeah. keep try to oh. make you to go backwards there. Unfortunately, before have we really talked about Sean before? Because to me, Sean to us is new. Shouldn't we? Say I think we, about that, that it could be that we haven't talked about it. I know people have uh, played with him and got from certain points, but it, it's very possible that we haven't actually discussed him on this pod. So maybe, yeah, yeah we I, definitely I, I should. Spotted. We definitely should because he's a very interesting character and a very interesting unit. Yeah. So let's talk about Lance Sergeant Sean McDermott. Eight points. And uh, for some reason, uh, when I look at this guy and I see the bowler hat and I see the mutton chops, I get some kind of uh, <laughs> feeling of, I recognize this guy. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, if you say so. But, uh, it's just uh, a bowler hat that's oh, missing yeah. at the moment, I think. <laughs> I'll get one if, it, if you say so. But, uh, well, that would be an honor. Uh, but uh, no, seriously, guys, uh, it's a very interesting character. Uh, I, I was a little bit surprised on his, uh, his the damage of the sword because I actually I thought this sword would be a mythical uh, magical almost kill uh, mythos creature sword so I actually thought it would have been it would be going uh, better against the big creatures perhaps there will be some extras for this or he'll find another sword but I just had a, I don't know why but yeah no, no one else had that. I just I don't know where I where I get it from, but I just have memories from someone saying something about this sword or something in some tournaments mm. or something. Well, he, he I mean he does have some special rules in the platoon, mm. uh, but yeah, I could maybe see that um, as it is now, he he doesn't roll any dice at all uh, for vehicles from vehicle four to seven. Yeah. So uh, I mean, and and because of that, you can't apply his expert skill. No, you you need to use the improvised weapons if you if you're up against something yeah. heavier. So yeah. I could really, yeah, I could have seen him having like one one against heavier stuff. Yeah, yeah. May- maybe at least, yeah. Uh, uh, but, but still, uh, his uh, I mean, he he's pretty good. Only eight points, and he's got uh, berserk. He's got charge. He's expert with his sword, and on top of that, he's got first strike as well. So. Yeah, he's a handful. That's no doubt. I, I don't think he's a bad person or I mean, I mean bad, a bad stat-wise hero. I think it's a good value for for the points. But uh, I could have seen him like had nothing against any vehicle and only two two against magical uh, mythos creatures or something. He had a, yeah, a some special, special a, yeah, it, yeah it, it, special attack against them. Or something. Maybe but, and also sorry. five hit points. So it, it will mm-hmm. take some fire to get him get him out of the picture yeah so yeah very interesting and cool hero definitely 
Yeah. Okay, so now let's go over and talk about the Desert Scorpions Command Squad. Please do. 13 points for this one, which might seem pricey for a Soldier 1 Command Squad. Uh, but if you look at the stats, uh, it kind of makes sense because they, well, they have the command squad uh, skill, of course, and uh, they don't really have any other special skills, but they have quite a lot of firepower. Yeah, they can definitely go toe-to-toe -to -toe with almost anything. Yeah, um, they, they can def they can hurt, put the hurt on everything in the game because yeah. they have uh, they have light phaser guns, they have heavy phaser guns, they have machine guns, both heavy and light, so it's, it's a mix of everything here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm really pleased with those uh, stats they have. Um, it's only the aircrafts that you might get a little bit weary about, but I mean... Yeah, you, you only have a few dice, but it's still, it's better than nothing. Oh, yeah. Especially if these guys are your kind of last stand at the end of a match and you have to get them going. They can put the hurt on the enemy if they need to. Yeah, I think this unit, uh, I would not use this like a classical, um, classical, so to speak, command squad. I would probably play this a bit more aggressively to be able to use their phasers to nice effect. I really like the... Um, the phaser submachine guns. I'm, as we've talked about before, the phasers are a bit, I don't know, sometimes difficult to use effectively and yeah. against mm -hmm. vehicles that don't roll that many dice. But the phaser submachine gun is actually pretty nice. Yeah, it rolls enough dice against uh, both infantry and vehicles to actually do things. Yeah, it's two two uh, against vehicles all the way. Yeah. And yeah, yeah well, I really feel like they're with the Desert Scorpions, the studio is bringing the phaser back a bit because uh, we will see this on other squads as well that they are, it, it's, they seem really interesting to be playing when they mix them up and stuff like that. But I, I'm not going ahead of myself, so I, I'll, I'll quiet down. That's a new thing, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's, just, it's yeah, something I'm, I said. I'm, you know, I'm in that's shock. <laughs> well, we're in Hellgate, so I mean, something else. Right, to... right. Yeah. Everything will change. Yes. Nothing will be the same. <laughs> Even me. I will be the quiet guy from now on. I will I'll just sit there and raise my hand and say, can I say something, please? No. Let's see if you have something to say about our next unit, the Desert Scorpions Assault Squad. Nope. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I don't have anything. It's, it's so, uh, I got nothing. This is a squad, uh, six points. They are armed with Bren guns uh, and uh, stun guns and five demo charges. These are the guys you put with Sean. Yeah, well, yeah. why not? Why not? Uh, I'm gonna go further and say these are the guys that you put in every Desert Scorpion yeah, army. army. Yeah, Basically, yeah. They're... The, this is the staple unit. This is mm. the one that you can compare to um, uh, like the African Lions yeah. or the uh, USMC uh, Kill Demolition Squad, squad. Uh, yeah, those, yeah, yeah, those yeah, five, yeah. six oh, points yeah. unit. Oh, yeah. This one is going to be played a lot. Yes. And to me, that what really gets me ha having problems sitting still, it's the demo charges. Because it's good otherwise, but that makes it, you can really do anything with them. Yeah, you, Nothing stands in their way and only six points and the <laughs> let's let's go there also. Let's look at their visualization. Look at the concept. Look at their poses. Look at their sculpts. Man, uh, I, ooh, I said I was gonna go for the Japanese. Uh, I had missed how good visually they have made these. Perhaps the Japanese has to stand back a month for me to try to collect some of these because th this is just what I'm mm, my my alley. Yeah, yeah, my as, as is just lovely, lovely miniatures. Yeah, and the same goes for the next group. I think the mm. Desert Scorpions Kill Squad. Yeah, and these are basically the same guys, but uh, without demo chargers, but instead with phaser guns, and these are ten points. So they are really pricey for uh, a Soldier One unit. Yeah, but look at yeah. what they can do. They they oh, the, with they that are. Combo. At, 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 at least at first glance, they are pricey for 10 points. Uh, but still, there are five guys here, yeah. all equipped with phasers. Yeah. So I'm thinking about these guys, uh, like jumping out of um, a yeah. uh, truck. 
mm-hmm. everything yeah. will be in range basically they can just wreak havoc when when they do that yeah compare with the, it's like 11 points to get three soldier three guys with uh, just three phasers so mm-hmm. basically no. if you compare them just straight off here you get uh, the same three uh, phaser smgs mm-hmm. but you also get an additional two phaser rifles yeah. with yeah. longer range and uh, only one dice each uh, for vehicles, but does one Three. extra yeah. damage. So you get a total of eight dice against every vehicle. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a wonderful unit. And, and they, they can, of course, also kill those mythical creatures quite good. So even you... I understand why you feel like the Desert Scorpion Assault Squad is the first main squad. I think a lot of armies will be that's the scorpion's kill squad that you pick first because then you really have the hurt on people uh i i yeah, this, yeah, uh, in, in my view this is also a very good unit mm-hmm. but the fact that it is 10 point means you can't really play you uh multiples of them in the same way when you have a unit but, costing uh, costing like uh, the assault squad uh, the assault squad costs six points yeah, you can swarm with the assault squad, but hey, uh, three squads with the kill squad—that's that's no that's no money. Thirty <laughs> point thirty points for for those for three squads of those because they can take out anything except, of course, the aircraft. Mm. They need aircraft ca- uh, cover, but on, you play at least a hundred points nowadays. So with thirty points and seventy points, anything because you don't need anything else. You, you only need air cover and three squads with kill squads. And you can kill anything. Yeah, but still, it's only five guys with Soldier 1. They are going to go down quite quickly. Yeah, yeah but use, use that uh, cowardice thing that people do. <laughs> use Maggie. <laughs> Just get one Maggie and then fuck anything. I'm yeah, but sorry. anyway, like, like you said, yeah. uh, Johannes, mm-hmm. when compared to the um, Soldier 3 guys, mm-hmm. the... the um, the heavy guys. Yeah. Uh, this this is just basically the same in my view. This is basically basically the same, but a little bit cheaper, and you get some more firepower. Yeah. Uh, they are a bit more fragile, maybe because they are soldier one, but still there are five guys instead of three. So yeah, and in my in those games that I have tried to play with those soldier three guys, they still just die like flies yeah yeah they die very quickly so yeah. i would say that they are fairly comparable and this one just have some extra firepower so mm-hmm. yeah so it's a very interesting squad and i'm really looking forward to see what these can do on the battlefield absolutely so next up we got the trucks we got the five ones that we've seen so far the mm. assault truck the command truck the gun truck the mortar truck and the transport truck but we also have a sixth one the tank hunter squad, tank hunter truck. Yeah. Uh, Twelve points for this one, and it's uh, basically the same as uh, most of the other trucks with the armaments. We have the normal uh, machine guns, but you also have one twin heavy machine gun and two recoilless guns for hunting tanks. I really like this. Mm-hmm. Just for twelve points, I would take this over a pounder any day. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But you take anything over a pounder anyway. <laughs> yeah, and, um, <laughs> sorry, but <laughs> yeah, and and in that equation, one of the important thing, at least to me, is that it has the raid ability. Yeah, yeah which is just amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you go three squares, you shoot ten with the recoilless guns, you take out the light uh, KV forty uh, KVs uh, that the Spetsnaz are bringing against you, or you take out the uh, laser walkers that the uh, uh, Endak is bringing, or whatever you're facing, and then you roll over and they roll around the corner and you hide behind the yeah. Um, the, uh, cliff I think or something. F- for me, yeah. this could be my staple truck when uh-huh. I'm going with the with the Desert Scorpions, just because it's so versatile and it got that raid thing, so you can do that hidden fade. Yeah. yeah, thing. Yeah, it, it's it's going to be so annoying to play against. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this one I think is uh, it's in the starter, right? <laughs> yes, I believe so. Uh, so this is what you're going to get in the starter, and uh, because of the armaments, if you have uh, the pieces, you can build this already yeah. with mm-hmm. the kits that are already out there. Yeah. So uh, lovely, lovely unit. Definitely, I, uh, definitely like this a lot. 
All right, so let's talk a little bit about the platoons for the Desert Scorpions. And these, that's, that's a lot here. Mm, yeah, <laughs> there's, yeah. uh, there's a ton of platoons going yeah. on, so this, this is going to be a fun army to experiment with. Yes. First off, we have the Greg and Izzy platoon, which consists of a command unit, with it, which is uh, Greg and Izzy, basically, and three identical combat units, which is any one of the trucks. Yeah. And uh, the... The kind of uh, platoon advantage you get from this is that on the first turn, or rather specifically from the start of the game until the units activate during the second turn, uh, all the Desert Scorpion trucks in this platoon gain extra saves. If they are in open ground, they uh, are considered to be in cover. If they are in cover, they pass their coven saves on both uh, the faction symbol and the shield. Yeah. Great. So this definitely complements that kind of aggressive, just move up onto the field and uh, wreak havoc. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> th this platoon advantage is exactly the same as the Heavy Rangers, but they have it until they activate during the, the second turn, turn yeah, yeah. Yeah. which is so much better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, and combine that with just the speed of the Desert Scorpions, mm -hmm. you can go quite a long way into your opponent's face and still benefit from Yeah, cover absolutely. But uh, yeah, I, I really like that they made this one uh, to last until they activate in the second turn. Yeah. Because that's kind of the problem with the Heavy Rangers platoon, that uh, even if you like rush them, even if you have uh, guys with jetpacks, I mean, they're really fast. You can push push forward. Yeah. And even if you survive that first turn, in the second turn, they will probably die because yeah. they don't have that save. But these guys, they will have the save. So and they get get at least, you know, one chance to, mm -hmm. to do something in the second yeah. turn. And that, that could make you, like, tactical that you wait to activate some of the stuff in the front line yeah, and exactly. go further with your yeah you can really push in the price back. you can play super aggressively and i'm not saying i know what will happen but uh, i would be very surprised if not the heavy rangers will have the same uh, skill text in the near future uh, i would be really really surprised that they will choose to not give yeah, the same I, advantage yeah, to them i, I so, wish uh, they update the heavy rangers platoon to have this exact same yeah, I, that, that I, be... I, I can't see Oliver letting that one slide. I'm I'm 100 sure he will. If he's not, it might be just to annoy. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> just to like, no, you shouldn't sit there and think you know how the game is played. So okay, yeah, <laughs> that, that's fair. But I'm 100 sure the Rangers will have that one. All right. Next up, we have Marek's platoon, your yeah. favorite. Yes, <laughs> of course. Elida. Yes, and uh, well, yeah, well. How can't you? We've been... How many uh, Polish championships have we been to now? And yeah. we have uh, encountered some of uh, Marek's uh, personal soldiers down there, <laughs> so to speak. So when you read and this... And we're familiar with our tactics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, this, uh, uh, yeah, this platoon... Su um, supply manager Pavel. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've encountered him a few times. <laughs> we have. So this uh, consists of Marek himself and, uh, again, three combat units which look the same, which is one of the three new uh, Soldier 1 infantry for the Desert Scorpions. So the Kill Squad. Uh, no, no, it says no. the Heavy Qu Kill Squad. Yeah, That's yeah. true. So it's the Kill Squad and either the Heavy Kill Squad or the Heavy Engineer Squad. So yeah. my bad there. Um, and the platoon <laughs> advantage here is called Heavy Drinkers. <laughs> Once per game at the start of his activation, Mark can issue a Bottoms Up special free action. All Desert Scorpion Kill Squads, uh, Heavy Kill Squads or Heavy Engineer Squads in or support of this platoon gain the expert skill with their ranged weapons until the end of the turn. Yeah. Really powerful, this one. Definitely. Yeah. With the phasers as well. Yeah. So good. Super combo. And that, I mean, yeah, as we talked about before, that kill squad for 10 points. Mm -hmm. If you play it in this platoon, now we're talking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah now bro. we're talking. So, and since you have, th you have three of these now, since you have the three squads and you got the phasers, okay, you mix and max perhaps a little bit over there. Uh, and then you add uh, uh, Marek, the character, to it. It's, uh, th these guys only near need air cover to, to kick the shit out of anyone. So, uh, I mean, it's, yeah, I love it. It's, it's a wonderful platoon. Yeah. Very nice. 
Next up we have Sean's platoon. So mm. this is the one you get, will get in the uh, starter box. Mm. So it's uh, Sean himself, it's a uh, Desert Scorpion Assault Squad, and it's the Tank Hunter truck, as we mentioned before. Yeah. So the bonus you get from this is... Uh, well, Sean gets the Follow Me skill, uh, which if you don't remember, is it's from the original rulebook. Mm. And... Uh, uh, yeah, he can take that uh, follow me special action, and I think every soldier one and soldier two unit within two from him, they get to roll a die, and if they roll faction, they get to move. I think it's two spaces, yeah. right? Yeah, so it's, it's a, correct. basically an, an extra little charge there. Yeah, uh, so that's one thing. Uh, also, uh, all Desert Scorpion assault squads in or supporting this platoon gain the charge skill as long as Sean is alive. <laughs> So that's also a bit uh, kind of aggressive moving forward. Yeah, and the assault squad. Yeah, like we said, they have demo charges. Yeah, yeah. So you you use his skill. You have a swarm of like five of these squads. Uh, you you do the uh, follow me, follow me first, first, yeah. quickly, yeah. And, and, then, and then they charge with yeah. their. Yeah. So, so that could also be a really cool thing to experiment yeah. with. And, uh, but wait, there's one more thing. There's more. (laughs) Yes. Uh, As a final uh, thing, it says, in addition, if any enemy mythos creatures or lesser mythos creatures is on the table, all Desert Scorpion units in or supporting this platoon are immune to suppression and under fire. Right. (laughs) So quite situational, but very, very cool and very thematic. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. I'm kind of thinking what you said before, Lude, about his uh, his uh, big sword, his claymore. Uh, this might be what you're thinking of, like the magic of it. If he has yeah, his own guys with him. Around him. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, exactly. But, but I also have uh, f- some vague memories from when he, they started talking about it as a scorpion, about Sean, about the sword, and they showed some renders on some tournament. And there were talks then that this were like the... The uh, the mythos that the, the, they didn't say mythos at that time. It was the occult killing thing or something like that. It was it was they they were using words in in those presentation that yeah, gave they, me. The, it could be something that we'll yeah. see more of uh, at a later date. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we'll see. Uh, next up, we get the diver platoon. So this consists of uh, the hero diver and two combat units, which is either the. Desert Scorpion Assault Squad or the Desert Scorpion Kill Squad. And this platoon advantage is called Unflappable. And what it does is that it gives all the units in this platoon uh, the Brave skill. And it also uh, makes if uh, any Desert Scorpions uh, units in or supporting this platoon that already possess the Brave skill can never be suppressed. So they don't even get the tokens. No. Yeah. So very simple, but could be effective uh, in some situations. Yeah, it's a, it's like you say, it's a simple and stable platoon, basically. It's not, you know, some fancy shenanigans uh, stuff, but, you know, they don't give up. They, they don't fear stuff. So, yeah. yeah and the, the, the interesting thing here is that it's all Desert Scorpion units. So there's no real... Uh, thing here about which units can benefit from this not it's if they're desert scorpion they can benefit from this yeah which is pretty cool in, a, in and of itself i think yeah next up yeah the desert scorpions patrol paratrooper platoon so this is uh, action jackson yeah basically so this is uh, the same as the as the old platoon in the uh, in the rulebook for the uh, yeah, for but, the yeah, allied no. block But now you version. can play them as actual Desert Scorpions. Yes, so that's basically the only difference. Uh, is it? Uh, I, is, 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 am, am I reading wrong here? Is it Heavy Commando Battle Squad Desert Scorpions? Is, uh, because in the other ones you got both squads. Uh, type 3 squads. Mm. No, it's, uh, it is actually the exact same one. Yeah. You need yeah. two of the regular yeah, units. Yeah, but you can use but it with the other ones. Yeah, so, the sorry. other ones, yeah. the, the, the kill squad, they also get the, the, ability, the ability. But, but you yeah. need Jackson and two of the battle squads. Great, great. Yeah. yeah. All right. Maggie. This is uh, Sergeant Margaret Marks, Desert Scorpions, and the command unit. So Maggie with a crossbow and two sniper squads in one combat unit each. So uh, this platoon advantage, it's called Advanced Infiltration. 
And uh, the rule for this is uh, all Desert Scorpion sniper squads in an in or in support of this platoon gain the scout skill. So this is something that we've talked about before, that one of the kind of... Uh, the, the weak points of snipers is that you have to get them in position before mm-hmm. they can do something good. Well, here's your chance. Yeah. Especially if you set them in a, put them in a transport truck or where they can charge out after they've moved in one of those when they have that ability and then scout from there. Yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. you can go really far. Mm, yeah. So this, this is very interesting and opens up some cool possibilities, I think. Yeah, it's a nice one. Small, cheap in points and everything. So, yeah, yeah. it's a nice one. So that's it. That was the six platoons. Uh, do we mm. feel like this kind of fleshes out the Desert Scorpions as a as a faction? Yeah, I think it almost does the same thing as uh, Condor did for the Falcon Jagger. Uh, so I, I feel like they, they are here now. They're yeah, arrived. I agree. I agree. Uh, I can't wait to get my hands on some of these units yeah. and you're starting to experiment with the platoons and stuff. This is going to be fun, I think. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's go over to our next block, which is the Mythos. And yeah, there's some really cool stuff going on here as well. And first of off, first off, we have the heroes, led, of course, by Rasputin, lover of the Russian queen. <laughs> yeah uh, this this guy is just bonkers <laughs> I, I think uh, 11 points so you won five hit points he has an eldritch bolt which he can fire which uh, has the radiation rule which we <laughs> can recognize from winter child and mm-hmm. yeah it does blast damage to uh, infantry and vehicles alike and he also has the sword of raw with 2-1 against everything. And uh, yeah, he has some other annoying stuff as well. Cheat death, damage resilient, and he also has uh, the big thing that makes him unique, the high priest skill, which means uh, that he can use some new skills. Specifically, get moving, you monster. And mm-hmm. close wounds. And these are basically reactivate and heal mythos creatures. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, he's got a bunch of skills and his his weapons are nasty and everything. But to me, I think it's going to be all about the high priest. Uh, that ability makes the mythos. I mean, you can do a lot of them up until now at least the big the big mythos creatures are kind of predictable and you haven't been able to reactivate them or heal them or anything but with Rasputin you can so that makes it very interesting now to make decisions as the opponent facing the mythos do you target the avatar first of all or do you target Rasputin yeah yeah it's going to be interesting to see how people react on this one uh, we had the pleasure of uh, playtesting him uh, in the early days uh, and then he had a different platoon that he has now um, basically I'm going to be honest with, when we did that I felt he was just it was just silly uh, I, feel, I see he's more basic now he's more uh, tuned down or he's more restrained uh, I and I hear you, Magnus, saying that it's all about the high priest, but uh, and he only has one radiation burn that he's uh, scorching. I still see for eleven points uh, with the all these. I, it, well, we we will we will have to play it and see. Uh, but I, I'm still I can feel backlash on this one as on uh, on uh, Winter Child. Uh, we, yeah, we will see. Just uh, the damage resilient and cheat death and such. He he will be difficult to put down. You have to put a lot of firepower into him. Yeah, yeah it's also an interesting kind of uh, situation there where you have if you put him with a squad that's not damage resilient, 
Mm-hmm. Then you do, you can't do like you, we normally do that. Just roll all the saves at once. Now you have to decide for each hit yeah, mm-hmm. if true. he's going to take it with his damage resilient, or yeah. if the squad is going to take it. Yeah. Yeah, because so I can still see him almost putting as the same amount of hurt as Winter Child. Well, not uh, as much, of not, course, but not, since he also has one of those uh, yeah, radiation but, beams. Yeah, but he's not he's not flying. He only have one of the radiation beams. Um, no, but two, four instead of uh, three, six, yeah, and he can be in a vehicle. And uh, you, yeah, I'm not going to be hyper negative here, but uh, I, 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 you want the leader of the mythos creatures to have big stats be a big hero and be the big I, i'm just gonna be I'm, I'm just gonna be a little bit reserved about it uh from from the start yeah, he's he, uh, he's a tough guy no doubt about mm-hmm. it because uh both of uh five damage um and d- damage death. resilience and cheat death so it, it can be difficult to remove him of course but uh in my view he's no way near winter's child no way near okay that's good and since uh, we we know that we before when the myths were coming uh, i couldn't kill any one of them but everyone else just killed them for fun so perhaps this is just i'm not going to be able to kill rasputin but everyone else is just going to sneeze <laughs> and he dies so perhaps no, it's uh, my nemesis this this army and this this character so no, uh, but I, I mean, th- this guy is soldier one Winter's Child Soldier 4. This guy mm-hmm. has 5 damage. Winter's Child has 6 yeah. damage. Mm-hmm. Winter's Child is a superhuman. This guy is not. So there's a big difference in how da- uh, how difficult they are to, to remove them. Big dif- uh, big difference. Yeah, uh, yeah. But he, uh, but almost, yeah. He, he comes equipped with some avatars on the side. It's like... Uh, That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, yeah. The high priest skill. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. what it's about. No, no yeah, well... <laughs> Tesla's. <laughs> Tesla. Yeah, well, Tesla's works on everything. No, it doesn't. But yeah, it, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to to play with or against him a little bit to mm-hmm. kind of get a better feel if those eleven points are too much or too, too little or just perfect. I have a feeling that it's if it's off, it's not gonna be way off. Maybe it should have been twelve points or something. I don't know, but but it's not. He's not that difficult. I'll, I'll hold you to it, Magnus. I'll yeah, hold you sure. to it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right. Next hero, Ekaterina and Sabertooth. So uh, this is the one that people might have seen uh, on certain pictures uh, on the web. The uh, hero with a big, well, tiger, <laughs> basically, <Yeah>. or lion. <laughs> well, it's a Sabertooth tiger, yeah. uh, basically. So... Uh, how is she as a character? Well, uh, Soldier 1, as most of the cultists uh, are. Six health, which is also kind of typical for for these units with an extra little side animal. We've seen this before with Lactina. Yeah. She has a pistol and a knife, so her own kind of armaments are not that interesting. But the Sabertooth has a big bite that's uh, more <laughs> to uh, deal some damage. But she do have the assassin rule. Plus mm-hmm. she has expert and first strike and of course her cat, tiger, whatever has both grapple and savage animal. So yeah, in close combat she is a beast. <laughs> both she and her cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, and this one I like much more also because I so f- enjoy the sculpt. I feel they really have uh, succeeded on that sculpt and it makes me and I, I look forward to watching that on the table and uh, play against it. Uh, may I just also just uh, t- say one thing about the Rasputin more? One more thing about Rasputin. We haven't seen his sculpt yet. That's true. So there, there's only drawn uh, images on him. Uh, so I mm. hope they will do some super model for him then. That is it's like... A, I think we have seen a, a render have we? Uh, on Facebook uh, okay. a while back, but... Uh, and it's similar to the artwork. Okay, sorry. Um, um, I forgot that one. But I, I just wish that it's going to be a big base. It's going to be... Perhaps even they do... Uh, I, I'm not saying they should emulate GV, but, I mean, their um, their their work with their... Uh, um, oh, my God. Uh, the different... Um, Special characters, Forge World, um, mm-hmm. the... Uh, oh, yeah, so you get, you get those extra little diorama bases yeah, and stuff like that. I, I, could ma- I could see that for uh, one of those elite uh, 
exclusive version yeah. of them, like we like we have with Guaylo yeah, at yeah. the moment. Mm, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. That could be a possibility. I yeah. think uh, we don't see it on this page, no. but I think we've seen on the scope that it has some kind of little rock or something that he is standing mm. on, yeah. uh, a, bit, a little bit similar to Lilith. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, but yeah, but she only has one little rock. Yeah, away. and I, I think hope they do something. Immense I think that with him. yeah, for the normal version, I think that mm. might be what you can expect. But yeah. then mm. perhaps we we'll see some special version of him with some kind of bigger base. We, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a super cool looking model anyway. I mean, the the artwork is amazing. Mm. Uh, uh, it just sets the mood. Basically, you're not. Yeah. Are you going to be just scared of him or or? Um, I don't know. Yeah. This is that image. It's um, actually when the chapter starts. It's a f- full image of him. Yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I really cool. hope they we do something more with that. You, you see that he's he's standing on something that seems like uh, perhaps part of a, a altar or something like that. And I mean, whew, I, I truly hope they do that with the. With this sculpt. Yeah. I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, going back to Yekaterina and Sabretooth. Um, I was just going to say that this is... Um, uh, in many ways, she's very similar to Tina and Hiena. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she's way more uh, close combat oriented or combat yeah, oriented. Definitely. I mean, she's not an officer, so you can't really use her for that. Uh, she, everything she has is geared towards... Especially close combat. I mean, she's expert with her pistol and her knife, and Sabretooth is also an expert because of the savage animals. Yeah, so, so expert on everything. Yeah, so yeah, it's gonna be nasty. Um, and if you put this together with uh, a unit uh, with her six hit points, you have a very good chance of getting close to another unit and actually using all these skills and attacks. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's very, very good that it's such big differences between uh, Ekaterina and uh, with uh, Tina and Ena. Because, I mean, Tina is the officer who has uh, indulged herself with a little pet there that is, of course, also versatile. And But here we have some... Uh, uh, religious fanatic uh, who wants who also worships the old devouring nation uh, n- n- devouring well yeah so I uh, to me it's 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 so good that they had so much differences even though they're so similar yeah. because yeah. they are really there it's like their character is very good uh, personified in these mm-hmm. two different yeah, absolutely it's a super cool model as well so let's go talk about the infantry. We have the cultist saboteur squads. These are the fest wearing guys with dynamites. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eight points for these guys. And uh, yeah, they have a bit weird kind of uh, armaments here because we have uh, two guys with just single revolvers. We have one guy with dual pistols. And then we have uh, <laughs> three guys with a single stick of dynamite and one guy with two sticks. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, pick and choose. The interesting thing about the dynamite here is that it is not limited. They can pull these out of their fesses. Yeah, well, mm, yeah. And it's also interesting that the dynamites are ranged weapons, range one. Yeah. Uh, Before we have seen uh, the allied hero priest... He's got dynamite as well, Mm -hmm. but in his case, it's it's a close combat weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Which is very interesting because that means that you can actually get cover um, from the dynamite. Yeah, which is good when they can use it so many times. Yeah, uh, so that's basically the balancing factor. So these guys, they have uh, yeah, they have a bunch of revolvers and they have an even bigger bunch of dynamite. Mm-hmm. But they don't really have any specific close combat weapons but they do have the charge skill yeah which, which is, is a kind interesting. of interesting and hilarious combination so yeah. i can see these guys just charging in and fighting and if they survive or if they are somehow reactivated they start throwing dynamites all over the place yeah. <laughs> so it's a very interesting and fun and different unit yeah next up we got the migo raiders squad so this is basically the same sculpt as the Migos that we saw in the starter box. But instead of just uh, claws, they have laser guns or ray guns. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not laser. It's uh, actually called a lesser death ray. 
Mm, yeah. yeah, it's very, very uh, nice models, I must say. I, I, I don't fancy this, and I still don't like it, but, but I must say, those, uh, it, it's not so much different from the other Migos, but I feel, for some reason, the aesthetics of these uh, appeals to me for some reason. The, I, don't I, know I is, love them. The, this looks so much fun. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, the design of these guns are so much pulp 50s sci-fi. It's, yeah. it's uh, uh, I just, I, I feel so happy I love at them. the name of their weapon. It's a lesser death ray, so you only mm-hmm. die a little yeah, when yeah, they have yeah, to. Yeah, of course, <laughs> yes, yes, it's one of those again. Yeah, well, I'll give you that as well. Uh, but like said, um, these are 10 points, uh, Soldier 3, like the other assault, the other Migo, the Assault Squad, they can fly, and uh, their death rays have the radiation <laughs> rule, which is really, really annoying. It does blast on blast one on all infantry, and then it just does uh, one one on uh, vehicles up to vehicle five. Nothing on six and seven. One two on vehicle one. So it's not that much damage, but it's radiation. So are they very likely to get? that damage in there mm. and on infantry this is devastating yeah, yeah. this is your steel guard killer yeah that's ethos. yeah definitely definitely they will do that uh i also must say i admire the, the color scheme of the picture they have chosen here with the brownish wings with the green tarnished green uh, elements on the wings it's, it's so beautiful it's so, so much harmonic it's, it's almost like a autumn leaf that has withered a little bit with the uh, well sorry um it's just it's something with these the whole the concept of of that picture that really even though i don't like it i love it (laughs) so yeah i I could see myself fielding multiples of these these Mm. are just really really fun and cool Mm. All right, uh, let's talk a bit about some bigger stuff coming up. We have yeah. all seen pictures of him. We have seen, uh, well, artwork. We have seen teasers. The Avatar of Cthulhu. Mm. Yeah, 29 points for this one. Vehicle points. 7 and 15 hit points. Yeah. Holy so this crap. is a big freaking bastard. Um, he only has uh, two claws to attack with. And uh, they only roll two dice, but they do four damage uh, all the way up to vehicle six. No, yeah, vehicle six and no. Oh, it's it's a little bit tricky to read this because of the low resolution on the file we got. No, it's up to vehicle five, three damage for vehicle six and seven. But since he's flying, he can, of course, also punch the crap out of planes. Yeah, but Um, you should note that he's got two... Claws and each claw rolls two dice yeah, against so vehicle, so it's dice. four dice against vehicle. Yeah, and against infant against infantry, it's got uh, six right so that's per claw, 12. so that's twelve dice. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's quite quite a lot, especially since it's a close combat weapon, so you can't really defend against it. Well, you can fight back. That's the kind of thing you can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, Skill wise, uh, he has charge. He has flying. He has Mythos Creature, of course. Then he has a few new skills here. We, uh, well, he has Devour, which we've seen before on Lilith. Mm-hmm. Uh, each time this unit inflicts one point of damage in close combat, it heals one health. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he, he's going to charge around and heal himself quite a lot. He's going yeah, to be this very is, uh, annoying. Yeah, but I, I must say, I really like this. Uh, if you look at the uh, the smaller, the spawn of Cthulhu's, mm. Uh, they have um, damage resilient, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, they don't have quite as many hit points, of course, uh, but they can survive for a long time uh, just by, you know, succeeding on their damage resilience rolls. Uh, this guy don't have damage resilient, but instead you kind of have to send him into the thick of it. Yeah. If you are damaged, you want to be right there. You don't mm. want to go back and hide or, or try to do something else. No, you no, want no. to just keep <laughs> killing stuff and that's awesome. Especially if <laughs> you consider thematic. his last skill which we haven't talked about yet. Exactly. And it's... Explode! <laughs> this skill reads he never becomes a wreck if destroyed. Any unit within range 2 is hit by a blast 1 attack. Line of sight and cover apply. 
Yeah, I'm, I might be hating this one more in the future, but but as you were in pointing in out there, Magnus, I think this is much more of a funnier character than the the smaller ones. I, I the, the the smaller ones are just tiresome and annoying and just hard to kill to me. This one because it's has all that duplexity of wanting to go get into it and wanting to kill itself to heal. It, it I just. Or, or not heal because he wants to explore at a certain place or a certain time. I just feel that this one will be a much funnier creature to play with and against than the other ones. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. This one is... Uh, it's going to be super cool. And, it I mean, the model looks amazing, of course. And, uh, yeah, very, very thematic. And uh, I think the, um, the spawns were kind of went past them how they are 23 points right yeah yeah so this guy is only six points more so yeah. uh it's you not, get a lot for that six it's, points it's not that much actually yeah so um yeah i like this one yeah yeah mm-hmm. Next up, we have another unit that's only artwork at the moment. Oh, so I'm sorry, remember, sorry, sorry. Yeah. One, one more thing I uh, might want to mention that he also counts as a large vehicle. Yeah. So he's two spaces. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That, yeah, that's the same as the, the other avatar that yeah. we've already seen. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's, yeah. the same is true for our next unit as well. No. Uh, but, but sorry, I'm cutting you again. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's one of those days. Uh, where is the second square? Because it's so fair. When you look at the model uh, of the avatar, uh, you, you see he's in one square and then he's... Example, I, we don't really see that on the picture the, here, so well, we'll, well, yeah, we'll, we'll have to me, wait and see how yeah. the actual model looks, I guess. Mm. Um, well, mo- most likely, he's going to be two. Uh, he's going to be t- two squares wide, not two squares long, because with his wings and stuff. That's the only way I can see him working. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Well, possibly. sorry, yeah. but this is all right. And that would be unique because we have no one who has moving two squares. That's in, true. In the, and that can make him hard to get into between stuff okay he can fly so he can fly over so it doesn't matter i understand that now sorry i <laughs> just fucking shut up won't i yes <laughs> all right now let's go uh, to the to our next one the Please spawn do. of shub nigurath 18 points for this one this is a uh, also a one of the larger mythos creatures it's vehicle five uh, has 10 hit points and uh, it has the psychic vortex and tentacles weapon so this is a little bit similar to the uh, avatar of Nyarlathotep. The psychic vortex works uh, basically exactly like the psychic scream that we've seen from the avatar. So once per game execute the psychic vortex free action to attack all units, friend or foe, in range 2 radius. And it's a blast attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, the tentacles are also very similar to uh, what we've seen before. It's a close combat weapon. Uh, it does quite a lot of damage against everything. <laughs> it's against 6-1 against uh, infantry and 2-4 against all vehicles, even all the way up to vehicle 7. But he only has one set of them, so mm. it's still only two dice. Mm. Uh, but the interesting combination here is the skills. So, uh, first off, he has the at the double skill. Mm-hmm. So you can just rush this guy up in the uh, first round if you want to, perhaps, or just plug up some holes in uh, in the army and block line of sight, stuff like that, maybe. Um, he has a move of two and a march move of six that could be worth mentioning as well. March move of six? No, mar- march move of four, so he can yes. move a total of six with yeah. that double, that's what I meant. And finally, he also has grapple with the tentacles. That's the really annoying Mm -hmm. part, I think. uh, Mm -hmm. That just go up and lock up the uh, biggest, meanest unit on the opposite Mm -hmm. side. Basically, Mm -hmm. that's what you do with this thing. But he still hasn't any charge. So to me, it's like, yeah, yeah, you run around and I'll kill you. Or you won't be able to do what you because you can't do the vortex with your at the double because that's four skills so four four things at a turn so that's to, true. To, to me it's uh, this is uh, it's a nice and wonderful drawing and stuff like that but it's nothing to fear but that's when you put in Rasputin to reactivate him yeah yeah <laughs> but you can't you can still not do that because uh, you still don't have that uh, oh well, yeah then Rasputin has to be up his rear 
<laughs> or <laughs> sitting in his mouth or something like that. But we'll, uh, we'll get to that later. Yeah, yeah I, I know, yeah. I know. Uh, but, but I just want to point yeah. out one thing actually. On um, at least here in the book, uh, the description of his psychic vortex doesn't tell the whole truth. Um, when you look further back in the book, we have uh, like descriptions of the skills. Uh, the psychic vortex actually on, uh, says that this attack ignores line of sight, infantry saves, and cover saves, but not damage resilience. Yeah. So it's uh, it's very close to the the psychic scream of the uh, avatar of Nyarlathotep, uh, except that it's got I think one range less. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a uh, it's a pretty nasty attack. Definitely. All right. Let's talk about the platoons for the mythos. Uh, first off, we got, uh, of the new ones, the Will of Cthulhu Platoon. Um, this is Lilith, so this is the same as we've seen in the uh, uh, starter box. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you haven't uh, got the start box, what this says, it's you got Lilith, you got a fire squad, and you got an uh, Migo assault squad. What this does is make uh, all the units in this platoon immune to friendly spores weapon. If you remember, it's the uh, Migo Assault Squad has also the similar kind of thing. They can drop spores in a range of one around them and yeah. damage everyone. And that makes your units immune to this. Yeah, that's a nice one. So you don't have to... Yeah. Or basically you can use screens and you can use uh, uh, like almost a horde army. You use a lot of cultists and you don't have to be afraid to, to kill your own guys. Yeah. Mm. Next up, we got the Strike from the Shadows platoon. This is Ekaterina's platoon. Uh, the command unit here is Ekaterina joined with a Cultist Saboteur squad, and the two combat units are Cultist Saboteur squads. Mm-hmm. What the advantage here is that uh, the platoon's command unit, which is Ekaterina with its joined with a Saboteur squad, gains the Spy skill. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting combined with that dynamite, I mm-hmm. think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And of course, with her uh, tiger, with grapple, and yeah, all of mm-hmm. her close combat shenanigans. Yeah. So that's how you get her into the thick of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very, very interesting. And it could be a incredibly annoying yeah definitely definitely if you're i mean if you're lucky and you roll uh, mm. double uh, uh, symbols so they get the two action you can actually uh, like charge something i mean with the spy skill you have to put them close to something yeah, yeah. yeah. but if you roll doubles you can actually go somewhere completely different if you mm. want you can um, um, yeah really use their ability to to wreak havoc. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, well, that won't be a really annoying one, as Johannes said there. It's, it has the possibility. Definitely. All right, let's so. go over and talk about the PLA. Mm. So going over to the SSU side of things here. Mm. Um, there's some new interesting units here and some old units that have been kind of repurposed for the PLA. Mm-hmm. First off, we get the PLA Command Squad. Nine mm-hmm. points for these guys. And uh, really nothing special. This is a typical Command Squad. <laughs> yeah, so, well, yeah, w- with no range on their weapons. Yeah, and stuff they like have. That. They're, they're <laughs> equipped with five submachine guns with range two, yeah. and they have, also have a power cutter. So yeah, that's that's what they do. These guys are not going to be in the front line. <laughs> uh, yeah. Most likely not. No. So yeah, just your basic command squad. Uh, more interesting is look at uh, the next page where we have PLA versions of the Red Rain and the Red Fury. Mm, yeah. Uh, Exactly the same versions that we've seen before, but now for the PLA faction. So you can mm. use this at your leisure without risking your faction bonus. And of course, uh, at least to me, I, I really like this color scheme that they use for, for yeah. the PLA. This yeah. kind of light blue. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, looks it's really very nice. nice. We also got a new hero and a new vehicle for that hero. It's Red Lightning, Captain Sarnai. Uh, she is an air pilot. Five mm. points. She has the brave skill, the lucky skill, and the take aim skill, which we haven't really seen in a while. No. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting to kind of refresh people's minds of this. It's hits on uh, crosshairs as well as faction symbol when using ranged weapons to make a sustained attack. And as she is an air pilot, of course, her skills apply when she's piloting an aircraft. 
Her own uh, armaments are not really interesting. She has a pistol. That's it. Mm. So she is definitely meant to sit in a chopper. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. So let's talk about her chopper. Yeah, but and let's say it's not her chopper. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a chopper. Yeah, yeah chopper. That, that is true. It's so on the same. Gets... It's on the same page yeah. uh, in the book as her on the same uh, then... on the same op- opposite page. Uh, this is not a unique chopper for her by any means. That's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, this chopper is called Grom. Twenty four points for this, and uh, it's a standard SSU chopper, basically with the uh, quad uh, heavy machine guns. But the other armaments are <laughs> the dual light Tesla guns. Yeah. What is really fascinating with this one, although, is that it's only the um, only the PLA. It's not an SSU chopper. Yeah, it's T- PLA specific. Yeah, which really surprised me. But but perhaps it will emerge for the SSU as well. But but please continue with the Teslas, the four ones. Yeah, that's that's the uh, the USP here, the unique mm. selling point. Mm. Definitely. I mean, who who does doesn't love a, a helicopter with Teslas? Uh, you can do some really, really nasty things with this. It's uh, 4-1 against all vehicles. And uh, just, it's it's not that much of damage, may- maybe. Um, and range, t- range 3, so you do have to get in close. But just that there is Tesla. Yeah. So you can go around and stun everything around you. Uh, yeah, this could be extremely annoying. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it's also interesting that when uh, Captain uh, Sarnai, she has to stand still and hover with the chopper to get her uh, Nikolai skill, as I usually call it, the, yeah. the uh, take aim there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, and then when she does that, uh, the chopper goes down. So uh, yeah, um, she she can have one glorious uh, yeah. round of firepower uh, shooting things, and then it. Probably will go down. So that that's basically, I think, how you use this is that you start off by going around, putting some stunt tokens on on stuff mm. over the place. Then, when you see what need to go, what needs to take be taken down, then you use her take aim and just mm. try to put as much hurt as possible on one specific unit. Yeah, but still, I, you can, I mean, you can go heavy on the helicopters and use the red ace or use the controller to try to uh, reactivate the Grom. Yeah, yeah, but still, uh, it's 24 points. It's, yeah, that's it, a, it's a huge amount of points. Yeah, uh, that's a lot. Uh, it, so the, I, 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 I really want to play this Grom chopper, but I, I, have, I have actually problems seeing the usage of 24 points. What is fun that is that uh, Saranai has the brave skill. So you will be able to do what Johannes said, jump around and shoot on many things. Yeah, that's true, because one of the disadvantages with helicopters is that even if they take a lot of fire and they survive that because of their special uh, cover saves, Mm. uh, they usually get suppressed pretty quickly. And if, in this case, you get the brave skill, so that's mm. not as much of a problem. No, yeah, and that's it's a need to use the Grom, I would say, uh, or to be effective with it. You have to have them both. But the, And then it's 29 points. That's a third of your army almost. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not... It's, and it doesn't take things out. It just annoys people, at best. Heavy things. Didn't you say before that 30 points is not that much? <laughs> uh, well, I thought I got more out of those 30 points than I get with this. This is uh, to yeah, me... Right, yeah, because, because those 30 points kill everything. This one annoys some things. And if I weigh 30 points, some annoyance, or 30 points killing everything except choppers, uh, or except airplanes, I would go with 30 points, kill everything. So, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah I hear it's what you're saying. And yeah, it's a, a little bit. So I think this one is best played together with something that uh, can reactivate it one way or another. So you actually have that chance to do it. Yeah, but, but then, then it, 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 means even, yeah, it means even more points. Yeah. So this is... Probably for when you're playing a bit bigger battles. It could if you're be, if yeah. you're playing only one hundred points, it's a bit pricey. Yeah. If you're playing one hundred and fifty or two hundred or something, okay. Now we're talking. Still, yeah. still, it's a really cool unit, and I love the the kind of theme and uh, thematics of it. So, if you want to run 
just a game for fun and just casually, uh, it looks really great. Yeah, yes, of course. It, it's it's a uh, Tesla chopper. It's it's wonderful in that aspect. Of course, no doubt about it. And if you have the right opponent that lets you get away with it a little bit, so to speak, then perhaps. So, so it's very, but, uh, let us say it like this then, it's not a thing you use to win a tournament. I would go with that. You, you don't buy, you don't include this to win the tournament if you, you are a tournament player, uh, I don't think. That's my, that's my take out of it. Mm-hmm. Right. Let's go and talk about the platoons for the PLA. Mm-hmm. First off, we got the Dragon and the Phoenix platoon. So uh, yeah, the starter box platoon. Mm. Yeah, um, people have been really itching for this. Yeah, uh, so yeah, it's the starter box. You got the dragon and the phoenix together for the command unit. You got one of the PLA assault squads, and you got the tropical Nina. And uh, what does this platoon do and then? You're all you actually. Oh yeah, it's three. actually uh, it's actually a th- uh, fourth unit as well. So it's uh, not exactly the uh, starter set. It's also one of the uh, Tesla workers, the Type 47, yeah. to get the platoon skill. That's true. So a bit different from uh, from the standard kind of starter box uh, platoon. So what this uh, platoon does is during each of their activations, the Dragon and the Phoenix can perform a special Get Moving Your Bunch of Monkeys Officer action as a free third action. It can only target themselves and any unit they have joined. Uh, if they are not joined with a unit, they can re-roll once any failed attempt to reactivate themselves. Uh, yeah, so that's basically what they do. They reactivate themselves. Mm-hmm, yeah. So you get some extra use yeah, so, out of them. So you, yeah, so you can put them in, in a unit to boost. And, and yeah, like, like most people, I think, do when they play these guys. Like, you put them together and in a unit. So you have, uh, like, seven models in a yeah. unit. Yeah. Uh, or even eight, like if you put yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Commissar in there or something. No, you yeah. can't do that right now at the moment. Can't you, don't, you? you don't have any PLA Commissars yet. Because he's both hero and Commissar. Yeah, yeah you can't, yeah, you so, can't so put can't Poon do. in there. No, no. you can't. So. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, and if you do that, uh, after they have activated, they can try to reactivate themselves with one die. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and if you choose to not put them in a unit, just run them by you know together as the two heroes they get to re-roll that so they have a pretty good chance of reactivating themselves but i mean getting getting two activations in a row with these guys yeah that's nasty yeah that could definitely be and i don't know if you have to cut this now or just have to kick me after i say this but if you put the commissar in there and the opponent complains you can only go this is no poon (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I, I was out of bounds there, but I just had to. <laughs> All yes. right, the next platoon is the Guaylo platoon for the Steel Guard. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, command unit is Guaylo. Uh, three combat units, which are the Steel Guard Anti Infantry Squad, the Steel Guard Anti Tank Squad, or the Steel Guard Tesla Squad. And this advantage is called Fire Support. All Steel Guard units in or supporting this platoon may re-roll any failed dice once when determining the number of actions received while trying to perform a reactive attack. Mm-hmm. Very interesting and something we haven't really seen done before, uh, playing with this skill in that way. Uh, I really think this is this makes it so you have to play your Steel Guards in a way that you might not be used to. <laughs> Yeah. It's a bit different. First of all, those three combat units that you need, uh, all of your choices are fairly expensive yep. points-wise. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have to invest a lot of points to get this platoon. But if you do, if you decide to run, I mean, a lot of steel guards, the advantage covers all steel guards units. Yeah. All mm-hmm. kinds of them. So yeah, you yeah. can go really steel guard heavy and, and get this benefit to all units. Um, and uh, yeah, the odds mm. of su- uh, succeeding in that reaction it goes up a lot. Yeah, definitely, it goes up a lot. I can tell you that. And 
I, what I really like about this one, apart from Paolo not fielding this one when he, we played him, I played him in Poland this, <laughs> this summer <laughs> because he would have been able to play it against me. Uh, that was, of course, good. But uh, the thing is that it reminds me of the KV-47 ones, but it's still different from that. But it's still, and since they are the big uh, humans, the step just before the KV forty seven. Oh, I, I yeah. feel like I'm, I'm like it's it's the thematic of it. It, it pulls carries into over that. in yeah. some way. Yeah, so, so that's what, what that's, mean. that's my really biggest uh, well, yeah, success with this. I think it's the biggest yeah, thing. But it's a uh, it's a nice platoon, I think, mm. because it's uh, the steel guards, as everybody knows, they are fairly slow, and uh, with this one you can play a bit like. Uh, reactively basically yeah, yeah, yeah you can you can just wait normally you always like when you roll initiative a couple of turns into the game second third fourth turn the guy who wins the initiative like almost always goes first yeah but with this platoon you don't have to do that actually you can kind of wait and see like wait the opponent i mean normally you're out, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's so still, you can, it's you still can let a, the opponent yeah that yeah I, I see what you mean it, it's still a gamble but with this advantage it's not as much of a gamble no. as it used exactly. to be exactly yeah exactly very interesting all right next up we got the pt-47 infiltration platoon yeah uh, i like the look of this so uh, the command unit is the pt-47a uh, i.e the command version of the pt-47 um, it's two combat units required and uh, they consist of either the pt-47b the pt-47c or the pt-47d Yes. Uh, the only problem with this platoon is that it won't be officially out before my next tournament, if I gather it correctly. And this is the platoon I will field. I will field this army. <laughs> I will. F- so what would I do? I will have to try to bend the rules with the tournament yeah, organizer. Uh, I can. I can say what you mean because this is very interesting. Uh, the advantage for this is called infiltration. All vehicles uh, using the PT forty seven chassis in this platoon that execute a march move when entering the battlefield, i.e. on the first turn, benefit from the camouflage skill. Very, very cool. Uh, yeah. Only works on the first turn of the game. The vehicle remains camouflaged until its activation on turn two. A camouflaged vehicle does not block line of sight, which kind of makes sense. Yeah. It also has a kind of special note here. This platoon is listed for the SSU block, but also works for the PLA and SPESNAS factions. But all the PT-47 vehicles in the platoon must be from the same faction for the platoon advantage to work. Mm-hmm. Really cool thing. I, I really like this platoon. Yeah, me too. I will feel this very soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not too soon, but... <laughs> Because this, uh, they'll also just make uh, makes it possible to just take up your positions and uh, mm-hmm. just plan out the start of the game and try to outmaneuver your opponents. Yeah, I can so, see a big platoon of this, and then you play the rest of the army with uh, Rosa's platoon. <laughs> oh, so yeah. everything is coming. <laughs> <Yeah. flat. laughs> well, what I will do because I uh, uh, by chance just acquired four more units of Chinese. So I'm not going to tell you how many Chinese squads I have now, but I need more of the PT-47s because I can't field China, all the Chinese in, in well, almost I, everyone. Put, but put, put them I, in the transport. Yeah. I, I think the answer to, to that, how many units you have, is not enough. Yes, yes. <laughs> as, as always. As always. As always. Right, so that's it for the kind of... Um, for spe- the good fraction. No, Let's go yeah, to the next for one. For the fraction okay. specific units, but we also have some uh, block units for um, the for the allies and the mercenaries. First off, we get one new unit for the allies. This is the Tornado, uh, which is a new plane. Mm-hmm. 23 points for this. Uh, same standard uh, basic features as the other allied planes, which is... Um, armor class 2 move 12 march move 24 and 6 hit points it also has the same sex topple heavy machine guns in the front its main weapon however is a twin heavy phaser 
And uh, like with the Grom, this is not a limited weapon, so you can fire this as much as you want. Yeah, yeah and, but I like this even more, actually, even though I shouldn't. Uh, perhaps it's been out long. I, it, for some reason, I just feel this will work a little bit better. And I also, I like to question you on, on one thing again. I understand why you say the main weapon is the phaser, but if we go rule-wise, isn't it always the first line that is the main weapon? So if we get main weapon destroy, I will lose Rules my... Rules-wise, yes, that's yes. true. And that, to me, is also a selling point. I will keep my phasers if I lose my main weapon. And I think that makes... Didn't the Grom lose its Teslas? Or was it the same thing there? Because this could actually be... Perhaps I'm just nitpicking now, but... Uh, yeah, that's yeah. true. The Grom loses the Teslas. But the uh, tornado keeps its phasers, at least if I interpret the rules yeah, right yeah, now. And I'm sorry if I'm absolutely nitpicking, correct. but mm -hmm. that's correct. Yeah, that makes it also one more selling point for me to choose a tornado before a Grom. Of course, I can't. Yeah, absolutely, a, absolutely. But this, but this, for me, I think that this is a an allied plane that I would definitely want to use, and I unfortunately I haven't really felt that with the other planes, with the old ones. Um, they just kind of felt too limited in what they were capable of. But this, I could definitely see myself fielding. Yeah, just the fact that you have two weapons lines, is aren't, they, aren't, they aren't endless. They, 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 they keep on shooting both of them. And that may, gives it so much versatility, more than just dropping a few bombs. And, okay, yeah, perhaps you die on the second turn as well with this one. But if you don't, you have something to play with. The, the other way around, it wasn't... It isn't the same thing. Well, yeah, I, I also like this, and I think it it shoots enough against uh, infantry to be a real threat. I mean, it it rolls quite a few dice there. Yeah, and uh, also against vehicles. I mean, that phaser. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it, two four, uh, even up to vehicle seven. That's that's pretty good. And uh, of course, the six tuple heavy machine gun also rolls a bunch of dice against other uh, aircraft. Yeah. So it can handle most things. And as you said before, it's not only you know one big bomb or something like that. It's it, it can keep doing this if it survives. Yeah, yeah. And what I really would like to see now is a cool pilot for the allies. Yeah. yeah. To that put would be, in this uh, baby. Yes, definitely. <laughs> that would be um, something, yeah. I'm not sure what skills uh, that guy or, or uh, I girl would have. I but, know. Uh, <laughs> I know the name of it. The right stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, I want to see a test pilot. We're coming up to that year now. I want to, one of the test pilots, Chuck... Chuck yeah. Jaeger. I want Chuck <laughs> Jaeger in of that course. tornado. And yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He's going to have the right stuff skill. I don't give a shit what it does. I just want the name right dun, stuff. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah, well. <laughs> the right stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it tickles yeah. everything in my bones. So, I mean... It's, yeah, it's, I, I, I'm, I, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, it doesn't matter too much uh, what that hero will do. Just no. something cool to put something in this baby. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Uh, the final new units are for the mercenaries first up we got the mercenary command squad 11 mm. points for this one and uh, this is kind of interesting <laughs> we got uh, three smgs we got one wrench for the mechanic obviously and for the heavy weapon specialist one rpg mm. again no limited weapons on this one mm -hmm. so pretty cool unit i would say <laughs> Yeah, it's an interesting one. It's the Spice Girls with J Lo because they get the halo over there. No, it's the <laughs> yeah, Beyonce. It's the, yeah, sorry. the radio. Uh, it's, it's a kind of special, interesting antenna array there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody's got yeah, the it's, halo. It's nice. It's a bit different. It's and, wonderful. Uh, uh, to me, one of the most important things is it, their move. Actually, they have three, mm -hmm. four. So it's yeah. it's a fast unit. Yeah, three, four. The basic move is really good. Yeah. So they can always get out of trouble, so to speak. They can always duck out. And yeah. there's, oh, shit, we can't be here. Now we just move. And then we still shoot command or something like that. Yeah, it makes mm. much sense for the mercenaries, oh, I would yeah. say. Oh, yeah. It's so good. And uh, finally, the mercenary anti-tank squad. So this is a new support weapon for the mercenaries. Six points for this one. So it's three girls and one uh, anti-tank, one recoilless gun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On a swivel mount, basically. Mm. Uh, so it's very similar to the heavy uh, machine gun versions uh, we've seen before, uh, but with another weapon, basically. Um, 
so yeah, I could perhaps see myself feeling this six points seems a little bit much, seeing that you can't move them that much. Uh, as a support weapon, they only have a one three move. So mm. they're a bit limited. It's easier to hide from these than it is from most other anti-tank stuff. Yeah, but so. I don't know. I, I like the recordless rifles. Uh, yeah, they're, they're good. And they're, range 8, and they do... They are pretty versatile. They can, yeah. they can shoot against most things in you know at least decently even yeah. up against vehicle 7 they have uh, 1 2 yeah which isn't much but they can finish things off or they can you know shoot some some softening uh, yeah. bullets there yeah with, with the machine gun nests that you have as well you can now start to really build you know like a defensive line with the mercenaries so you can really start. and then of course we know that the railgun is coming even okay they only have one railgun and you can only feel one railgun but one railgun two of these anti-tanks and two or three with the machine guns still no points and it's a solid defense line that can handle almost anything that comes at them. So I I feel this is a very good complement to uh, the... Uh, another thing that... Uh, another detail that's worth mentioning with this one is their uh, secondary armaments, with yeah. this, which is two Thompson submachine guns, mm-hmm. uh, which is range four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's really good. That's really good mm-hmm. for, uh, for this because uh, normally you have very short ranges with the uh, with the sub with the machine guns or the defensive weapons for anti infantry, it's usually like two or three range. This is four range. It's a, it's a bit difficult to see, but I think it's actually three Thompsons. I think they all. Have, oh yes, that's yeah, true. Yeah, they I actually think they're three, all so, they, they can, so... so they can fire. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, because of the support weapon rule, they can only fire the two of them if they also fire the recallless gun. Uh, no, e- e- even one. Yeah, o- only one of them. If yeah, they finally recall, but, yeah, two like, of them. Like you said there. before, they but are good defensive units. Defi- yeah. yeah. If they, uh, if when I look at this, uh, take those uh, Tom- Thompsons into account. Yeah, uh, that kind of raises them up a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if yeah. you put them in a nice uh, defensive position uh, to use their recordless rifle. Uh, Maybe that, if that's you can good. get them up on, for a, example, on a roof if, or something, get them yeah, right advantage. If, you, if, if you're facing um, Fallschirmjäger, uh, you know, mm-hmm. or something else really fast when they come quickly running against you, mm-hmm. uh, those Thompson can put out some hurt as well. Yeah, yeah it looks so. like it's 5-1 against only one for the Thompson, so that's 15 dice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. That's not too shabby. Oh. I like it. All right. Uh, then we have some new skills to talk about. A few of these we've already mentioned, but uh, one of the interesting things uh, in this book is that there are some skills uh, defined here that are not used by any of the units in the book. Yet. So here's <laughs> yeah, here's where we get to uh, kind of the hint, previews, nudge, nudge, wink, wink portion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what's really interesting is that uh, a few of these are definitely linked to the Japanese. Mm. Yeah, yeah. First off, uh, especially, Banzai! Yeah. (laughs) This This skill reads, a unit can declare Banzai at the beginning of its activation as a free action to gain the expert skill at all, on all its weapons. Under the effects of Banzai, the unit can't roll for infantry and cover saves at all. Can only be used once per game. So, yeah. <laughs> That's a super skill, I think. Uh, it, we will see how it will be used, of course, and we can't say... But I love this, that you, you like go crazy running against opponents. You get super charged, but also you get killed so easily. So if you don't succeed, you're in open territory and you anyone can pick you off, basically. So I think it's a good counterweight in that in that skill. Yeah, I, I think it does a fantastic job to to simulate that uh, that you know like suicide attack really. You just charge forward or you just you know uh, runs out from your hideout to to try to kill as many things as you can before you go down. Yeah. I think this is going to be fun both playing with and against. Next up, we got close wounds. Uh, a unit with this skill may take a close wound special action. This is one that we saw on Rasputin. 
so this is basically the uh, the heal skill, and it works the same as the medic skill uh, does for the for the normal units. The one little difference, one little detail, is that it's only range one. So uh, and that that is very good. Yeah, but it's uh, it's good. it's the same with the medic. You have to mm. be within. You have to be adjacent. Yeah. Well. yeah. So it's that's it's true. a medic skill. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Uh, next up, we've got the Cultist Command Squad. Uh, so we haven't really seen the unit for the Cultist Command Squad, uh, but we got the skill here so we can get, kind of get an idea of how this will work. Um, yeah, they, they have an officer mechanic and medic that are identical to those of a regular Command Squad. The skills can only affect Mythos creatures that are not lesser Mythos creatures or Mythos creatures. Yeah. So only human uh, Mythos humans, units, yeah. yeah. So yeah. no creatures. Yeah. The squad also contains two priests that form a psychic choir. If at least one priest remains in the unit and is on the battlefield, a high priest can also use the psychic choir ability. Now, this is something we're going to talk about a bit later on, but this is, uh, yeah, this is for uh, Rasputin. Yeah. yeah. Next up, we got Dazzling Speed. So this is also for the uh, Japanese. Um, a unit with this skill always passes infantry saves on shield as well as a uh, faction symbol. Roll one die for each point of damage the unit takes in close combat, negating one point for each faction symbol rolled. This skill is only shared with units joined that have the cadet title on their unit card. So the cadets, that's the uh, schoolgirls, yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so and they, this will, is... they will be pretty tough to, to, yeah. uh, to get rid of because they will have a nice infantry save and if they get up in close combat, they will have, uh, will have that faction save. Yeah, so. so we'll see if this is uh, on just a regular unit or if it's on a hero that's for that unit. Yeah, um, yeah we don't know that. So, But, no. but anyway, it's, yeah, because it, the skill says cadet title on the unit card, I'm, I'm guessing you can make some kind of nice combination either way. Yeah. Next up, Exalted. So this is another new one. A unit with this skill can join a unit with a lesser mythos creature skill. Uh, so it's a way for a human hero to join up with, uh, well, the Migos at this point, at least. Yeah, and it's really interesting, the one part that comes after there with the flying thing, that it's actually, we will see perhaps then a human with wings or something like that have been um, well, transmorphed from... We the... have seen a flying human for the cultists, actually, uh, previewed. Mm-hmm. The guy on the flying mat. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, but yeah, now you, now you're off. Um, Rene, guess stretching that, that guy isn't <laughs> exalted. No, no, I, I, I don't no, no. think so either. No, <laughs> he's flying. Yeah, sure, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, I'm seeing something in front of me now that trans has been the human and is now starting to shape and form into yeah, that. That's, that. That's also the idea that that I get some kind of cross between human and creature thingy. Mm, yeah. All right. Next up, get moving, you monster. We talked about this briefly when uh, discussing Rasputin uh, as well. The same thing as uh, get moving, you bunch of monkeys, but again, uh, only within ranged one. Right. Um, next up, we've got improved camouflage. <laughs> a unit with a skill may take an improved camouflage special action. Uh, once it has done so, it cannot be targeted by attacks from range two or higher. So you have to be adjacent to these guys in order to attack them. Yeah, um, so this is exactly like the the regular camouflage skill, but it's the it's you have to be one one range closer yeah. to them, which means yeah. you have to be if you're playing on squares, you have to be right next to the unit, otherwise you can't see them. Yeah, yeah. So it's very cool in that way. Next up, we got phosphorus and phosphorus flame. So this is a new um, kind of pair of skills that do similar things. Um, Phosphorus has a weapon with this skill attacks all ground units in one square uh, grid or under one blast template if you're playing freefall, freeform. Roll to hit all units in this area. After the attack is resolved, the fire from this weapon continues to burn on the ground until the end of the next game turn. Place a Phosphorus token on the affected area, roll to attack any ground units that move into the area. Roll immediately when the unit enters the area, even if it's planning to move completely through. This means that any survivors of the original attack can leave the area without being attacked again by the same Phosphor. And units with a flying skill can move through the area without being attacked. 
So yeah, it's uh, it's a flame that continues to burn, mm. basically. Yeah, that's yeah. so tactically interesting when you can start building firewalls. Uh, and I mean, I mean, if you have something you fear that's coming your way, put up that wall of fire and just yeah. Yeah, up until now you had to deal with it in other ways. I mean, you can stop vehicles by by sacrificing other vehicles. Yeah, and yeah, building your own yeah, tank trying, traps, trying yeah. to block like that. Mm. But this one is is uh, interesting, especially since it's. Um, uh, I mean, I haven't seen any weapon yet using this, but I'm guessing it's going to be most effective against infantry. Yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, very likely. And there's a lot of those fast, uh, nasty infantry units that you want to hold off just for one turn or, or just for a little bit. And uh, I think this phosphorus rule can yeah, be really interesting for that. Yeah, yeah just, just perhaps... Um uh, hinting to the opponent that perhaps your unit wants to go down that alley. Okay, there's where I have my machine gun nest. And oops, what a coincidence! You're running straight to my, yeah, my, my machine gun. <laughs> we'll have to see exactly what units will have these phosphorus weapons, mm-hmm. uh, and, and I mean, of course, what range they have and everything. Uh, my idea is that if you have a few of these, if you let's say you have two, three units with this, and you can shoot at least, I don't know, a few squares with it, mm-hmm. uh, you could kind of like funnel the enemy. Yeah. You put a little bit of fire over here and a little bit of fire over there, and yeah. they have to like move into a corridor and yeah. maybe uh, really bottling up, and. Perhaps you have some artillery as well. Yeah, and then it's really, really interesting. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's a little bit. You want to, uh, you would have lo- loved to have done that and had something hidden there that you could just go, "Whoo, here it is!" But of course, you can't do that because we're playing a game and the opponent has to see your unit. So, yeah. but how fun wouldn't that be just to uh, think, get the opponents to think that you're moving in the right direction? This is the safe way, but no. Someone stands one, waiting. One interesting detail with this is that I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a fire that burns and mm. it burns the same amount of time as uh, smoke that we've been using for quite a while now. But this uh, phosphorus doesn't seem to hinder uh, line of sight in any way at all, even mm-hmm. though it's a big fire. So you can see straight through it. Yeah. Mm. So it's a it's a. Yeah, it's a very interesting addition to the game, I think. And, and one thing if you that should be noted also, if you want to try this to build up fire protective walls and get things, it actually specifically says this weapon cannot be fired at an empty space. You need at least one target yeah, to yeah. use it. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. a, that's a very important detail to mention in, in this discussion. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. You can't just fire... Fire, fire everywhere. <laughs> well, Unfortunately, maybe for some people. Yeah, I, I can see someone being able to first fire smoke so the opponent goes into the smoke and then they fire the phosphor into the smoke. That's a little bit evil, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, sorry. Please go. All right, next one is Psychic uh, Choir. Just, sorry, oh, no. sorry, just one more thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, with this, that you need at least one target. It's uh, a very interesting that pops up into my head is: can you fire at your own troops? Mm, yeah, to burn them. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think the the ruling before has been that you cannot uh, have you cannot target your own troops, but if they are in. The, mm-hmm. If they are in the affected area, they can still be hurt. Like if, right. if you shoot with a flamethrower at the unit yeah, that yeah, stands sure, behind one sure, of your own absolutely. units, yeah. then you can attack. But, but you I can mean, directly attack your own units. No. Uh, that would be the... Okay, I'm not sure if I've ever heard... That happened, that happened actually once in Poland when I was playing against Marek. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he used a flamethrower through his own Sergeant Victory to get one of my units. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like so. collateral damage, uh, I'm fine with that from, from uh, flamethrowers or from artillery or something like that. Uh, that's fine, but uh, yeah, especially with this phosphorus rule now. Yeah, uh, because so, you so, might want to put down that fire. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe only mm-hmm. have that one soldier, one guy yeah, left, definitely. and it's fine to sacrifice him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, but and you take down. But some I'm not sure if uh, I can't remember if I've ever seen this question or any answer on it come up. Actually, so I think yeah. I have at some point, yeah. but I can't recall it at the moment. But yeah, yeah it's an interesting it's, question. Yeah, but it's it seems logical that you can't fire on your own troops, especially with this, because it would be uh, kind of take away the idea here. I think. Yeah. So the next skill we're going to discuss is the Dust War Journals podcast, or what, what was the <laughs> no something? It was called another thing. What was it called? <laughs> the Psychic Choir. Yeah, that's yes. what the name. Sorry, I, I, just, yes. I get those two mixed up sometimes. <laughs> very, sim- very similar thing. Yeah. 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 So this is uh, basically the thing we talked about before about the cultist command squad, uh, which has those two priests that has this. Um, what this skill says is if a high priest is joined to this. To a unit with this skill, it allows the high priest to use its mythos special actions on mythos creatures anywhere on the battlefield. So yeah, this allows Rasputin to reactivate and heal creatures anywhere he wants. Yeah, and that's why we see all the snipers popping up in all the armies, <laughs> spetsnaz and uh, death scorpions and whatnot, because you need to take these two and the medic out as quickly as possible. Yeah, of course. It's uh, but but as usual, the the command squads are usually, you know, fairly well hidden yeah, somewhere yeah. in the back. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Maybe with Rasputin, you want to push them up a bit further uh, because he can do some stuff. But like I said before, uh, this ability of his to to be able to especially reactivate the big monsters, uh, it's going to be really nasty. So you have to you have to really have something. Yeah, to take that unit out. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see first how much will the uh, command squad be uh, in points, and then how will people play them? Will they, if there's a lot of points, will they jo- um, hit them on the battlefield because that can hurt the player hitting a, jo- a big part of their army? Or uh, yeah, well, what what can happen with this? And uh, I, I think perhaps we will see uh, some ex- more experiments that we have seen before, but now even more so with choppers and snipers out of the choppers, because uh, you can't hide from the chopper and the snipers. Well, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, for instance, steel guard snipers in a chopper. That's quite nice. Uh, so, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, or a flying banana filled with snipers. <laughs> oh, yeah, now we're talking, of course. A broadside attack there, oh, lining nice. it up. <laughs> All right, next up we have uh, quite a treat for people who are looking forward to the Japanese because we have the rail weapon skill. Mm. A weapon with this skill ignores infantry and cover saves. When it damages a vehicle, roll three dice to determine if the attack causes a critical hit, still needing two faction symbols to do so. Yeah. It- and why not just take the other skill after that as well, because they are so... They are different. very linked, because yeah. the next in the list is Range U, which we know also will go on the rail weapons. Uh, a weapon with the letter U instead of a number in its range column can fire at unlimited range. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this is going to be nasty. Uh, we don't really know how nasty yet, <laughs> because we haven't seen... Uh, the, yeah, uh, it, it the all weapon de- lines for yeah, the exactly. weapons. It, it, so. it all depends on uh, on uh, how many dice they roll, yeah. how, how much damage they will do, what unit will be using these, uh, how tough will they be to take out. But I mean, ignoring infantry and cover saves and rolling three dice to cause critical hits, and on top of that, have unlimited range. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ouch indeed. It Ouch. do has the possibility, and if you. Keep playing with no terrain. It will be uh, probably devastating. Uh, but if you have a lot of terrain, I still... I, I don't fear this. Uh, I know I, I'm perhaps a minority. Uh, but uh, I, I, if it's a lot of terrain, um, the U and the ignore skill won't be that much effective. Because you won't see the opponent anyway. So it doesn't matter if... Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, today, uh, a few of the big guns that have, like, range uh, 14, 16, 18, in a lot of cases, it doesn't really matter. You will reach whatever you want to reach. Hmm. Uh, Of course, if you're playing on a big field with three or even four mats or something like that, it it can happen that you can't reach stuff. But for the most part, those big, big guns, 
they won't have a problem anyways. Uh, so uh, yeah, I agree. The range unlimited is probably, at least in my view, uh, the least good of, of the railgun stuff that we've seen so far. Um, but yeah, ignoring infantry and cover saves, that is huge. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, phasers, they ignore cover saves. That's it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. But these, they ignore infantry and that's cover true. saves. And on top of that, if you don't manage to kill, you can cause some serious critical hits. And yeah. that also uh, means that they work wonders against zombies and steel guard. Yeah, which absolutely. Which get cover saves, but they get improved infantry saves, yeah. which mm-hmm. get cancelled. Yeah, so. yeah but, but still, if you... Uh, at least my... What I've seen so far on the renders and stuff, it's like one big cannon. And if you run around with a big walker trying to kill one zombie with a railgun shot, (laughs) then please, please do, please use your big railgun to shoot one of my zombies. Yeah, like we said, it it all depends on how many dice and how much damage they will do. Uh, If they have gazillion dice, it will, of course, be ludicrous but yeah, it's, uh, most likely it won't yeah it, it, it will be interesting to see uh, the stat lines for this yeah next up we got smoke grenades these are basically the exact same skill as uh, smoke launchers but i'm guessing just for for fluff reasons uh, this is called something else because they are going to be used by infantry instead of vehicles yes mm-hmm. um, i'm guessing the ninjas this feels very yeah. ninja to me mm-hmm. <laughs> running around with smoke grenades yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's also my guess. <laughs> All right, uh, and the final new skill, veteran, mm. a unit with this this skill has survived many battles. At the end of each of this unit's activation, roll a die. On a faction symbol, the unit and any unit joined immediately gain a move or attack action. This cannot push the unit beyond having three actions during its activation. So this is the first time uh, we have seen anything that allows a unit to make two different attacks in two, one activation. Yeah, two separate attacks, yeah. as possible. Yeah. It's very interesting. It's like a hybrid between uh, get melem, move and fire and uh, raid or something like that, but yeah. and also with a, a a huge part of chance in into it so yeah, it's uh, 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 to, yeah, be, you, to be able to attack twice or to move and attack and then go back again and yeah the combinations here can be really powerful but it's really it's it's very dicey since yeah you have to roll a dice and it's only one in three and on top of that i mean compared to the um uh panzer kampf group yeah. right yeah the platoon with the ludwigs and stuff yeah, yeah. uh when you when you uh, activate one of those uh, Ludwigs, you roll the dice first thing, yeah. so you know what, what you, you will be able do. to do yeah. during the activation. But with this one, with a veteran skill, you, uh, you you activate and you do whatever you want to do, and then you roll the dice. You, yeah. you don't really know what what's you're going to happen. Yeah. No, you can't plan and the, for that's it. That's the interesting part to me. Yeah. yeah. So yep, the yep. interesting thing is then to think of which units might get this because it, when we talk about it this way, it's, it kind of reminds me of the uh, thing we talked about with Banzai. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. If, if this is a skill for the Japanese, it definitely feels like in, in the same vein that you, you rush forward and you damn the consequences. If it works, it works, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but I can see units from all fractions having it. I, I would love to yeah. see some. It's, I mean, it's so um, so generally it's, yeah. uh, formed with with a name veteran. It yeah. definitely can be used by anyone. Since it's called veteran in singular, not in plural, uh, I'm guessing this is for heroes. Yeah, mm, it could I would be, yeah. be very surprised to see any any normal unit have this. Mm. But like you said, Luda, this is uh, I can see any hero. From from any block or faction have this. Yeah. What would happen that if this would be an add-on? Of I don't think that will happen in any way near the fu- near future. But for instance, like uh, the Ranger Twos, if you have Ranger Veterans, you pay two more extra, and all Rangers get a uh, two extra per squad. I mean, or one extra per squad, and all Ranger Two of your Allied forces are hard die hard veterans. Now they have this skill. Uh, 
for some extra points or something like that. It's like a, a platoon that you have to buy points for, not just getting. Uh, it, it could be interesting. Like, okay, today, today I want to be, I want to play the diehard f- platoon that has been round. So and I sacrifice uh, twenty points of my army and all our veterans. Yeah, that's, or something. Uh, that's a very cool idea, actually. Mm-hmm. Put together, put together a nice platoon where you have to, to you know, choose maybe a few units that aren't played that much. Mm-hmm. But then you get veterans on them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they've been around like five yeah. years. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll see. see. All right. Cool. So the final section of the book then is the scenarios. There mm. are four of these. And uh, the first three are very linked together in a, a kind of story that we're not going to spoil for you. No. But it's, it's very interesting. Mm. Um, they, they, uh, on the scenario setup page, it's... Uh, says very clearly that uh, you can of course play them with any miniatures you want but they suggest specific uh, army compositions uh, mm. well general uh, that you sh- you should per- you should use this army but not this specific unit you uh, well mm. stuff like that mm. um, so it's basically a, a story unfolding through these three scenarios yeah i mean it's it's linked to the the actual story in the book yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's much we so can you say. can play play the stuff that that are described that happens there yeah but uh, the fourth scenario is also very much worth mentioning because this is uh, a scenario that was uh, that won the competition uh, on facebook a while back Mm -hmm. uh, that dust studio held uh, that michael stacy won so this Mm -hmm. is a scenario called between a rocket and a hard place Mm -hmm. and this seems (laughs) <laughs> really fun uh, we definitely need to try this one um yeah uh, we shouldn't go through all the specifics here but this is this is very sp- this is a very special scenario with actually um a three player setup mm-hmm. yeah so uh, yeah and that's we definitely very interesting to because, try this very soon uh, because yeah for a lot of reasons uh, it tends to be difficult to play uh dust in in, in when you're three players yeah it, it tends to kind of, I don't know, it, it always get a little bit weird somehow. Mm-hmm. If you're, uh, I mean, if you're five players, th- I think that's fine because it becomes so chaotic, so mm-hmm. it doesn't really matter. But if you are three players, it tends to become two versus one, one h- however you, whatever you do, basically. Yeah. But I think this scenario kind of handles that because it, it yeah. Uh, yeah, and why don't we just, since we happen to be actually three, play this one? once and then give our verdict on it yeah Yeah, absolutely absolutely let's try to do that before before next episode oh oh, yeah please if possible yeah Yeah. definitely we'll try yeah (laughs) so by the way that's not a promise yeah (laughs) exactly (laughs) (laughs) call back yes all right Um, and well borrowing the lore and the story in this book that's it yeah yeah. Uh, this is a fantastic book I have to say it. This mm-hmm. is uh, this is definitely I I feel uh, a successor to the Condor book in, in all every way. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. It's uh, it's a great book, absolutely, and it kind of uh, I don't know. To me, it feels that it's both uh, like the last chapter in this all of this Babylon saga that we've been been playing and reading now for a while yeah it, it but definitely also it feels, takes that yeah. first step i don't want to spoil too much yeah. uh, about the story there but it also kind of takes the first step into the next saga yeah, yeah. because you were all already mentioned it nothing will ever be the same is the uh, subtitle for yeah, it yeah. so uh, it, it, it stuff shit happens <laughs> so yes. yeah it's uh, definitely super if, cool book and i'm uh, yeah i'm already looking forward to the next uh, to the next expansion it's going to be yeah. so interesting to follow this up i mean the big boxes they had back in the day were good but this is this is act- this is better the way they have ventured now with these books uh and i haven't read everything of course i haven't not read anything actually i just watched a few pictures and talked to you guys about it but uh it's still it's clear to see it's more they're expanding you get more for more bang for the buck i mean with this one so i uh, yeah 
it's 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 a good it seems to be a very very good book i must say i must say so with that that ends our look at the operation hellgate expansion book and uh, i would like to thank everyone out there listening uh, for staying with us all this time (laughs) this has been a lot to go through but i hope it's been worth it and uh big thank you from me johannes and from Magnus. And always a big smile on my face when I've been with you guys. Loda says hi. And as uh, usual, well, not maybe always usual, but as special this time, we will see you at the other side of the Hellgate. Thank you for listening to Dust War Journals. You can find us at dustwarjournals.com or on social media at Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Dust War Journals. And you can find our Patreon page at patreon.com slash dustwarjournals. All music used in this podcast is made by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com.